Hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're going to be adapting a micro chuck for the lathe and the mill. So this is a new old stock chuck, uh, it's German made, it's a Metabo and, so, and it's stamped with West Germany on it so presuming that's at least made before the 9th of November 1989 so um, I could be wrong with that but it's a pretty good guess. So this has been in the box from brand new since then and it's in very good condition. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify a Moore's Taper 1 back end arbor for that to create that to become a parallel shank back end and we'll cut some of that off. We're going to fit it together and that will then go into a collet chuck in the mill or even into my chuck in the mill depending on how accurate I need to be but largely it'll be in a collet chuck because this needs to spin incredibly accurately because this is going to have tiny tiny drills in it and this is largely as I built the Mark engine recently and messing around with one millimeter drills and things like that you know it takes longer to try and get the drill running true in the chuck to drill a hole than it does to actually drill the hole when you're using a big a big 16 millimeter range chuck they're not designed to hold stuff really that small so that's what that's for and we're also going to make a slight adaption to my uh, tailstock die holder for the lathe and what I've always wanted to do with that was have that multi-purpose and have that as a sensitive drilling device as well so we're going to make a slight adaption to that so that we can then use this chuck also in the lathe as a sensitive drilling device using the tailstock die holder so we'll show some of that so they're the sort of they're the sort of bits and pieces around this video uh, we've got a bit, bit of sort of between centres turning of the Morse taper sleeve until we chop the end off it, so something a little bit interesting. So we will bring you back very shortly at the bench and we'll just have a quick look at the parts that I've got and then we'll go to the lathe and we'll get on with the modification of the Morse taper shank. So these are the two parts we've got. So we've got the chuck in its original box, all in marked up in German and it's still in its original bag I have had this out and I've just given it a clean to get the old sort of grease off that it was packed with and give it a uh, a nice oil up to make sure it's running nice and free it's very nice very nice motion and that will grip down to you know, very very small diameter drills probably down to almost zero looking at the way those jaws close up so as I say German quality yeah it says zero to quarter of an inch so that will go down to sub one millimeter quite easily um, and it's a Metabo and I don't know if you can see it on the back ring it says Western Germany on it so that's a clue to the age of this thing but you can see the condition that that's remained in and then in this box we've got a JT1 Arbor Morse Taper 1 back end on it again I think this is new old stock and fortunately we've got centers in both ends bit of rust in that back end so we're just going to need to give that a clean before we put this up between centers so we're going to put that between centers on the lathe we're going to turn this back end down to a parallel shank for a, a length of probably, I don't know, 30, 40 millimetres. We'll decide what diameter we're going to. And then we'll chop the end piece off, the, the actual end piece that we don't need. And then we'll fit that into the back of the chuck. And then I'll have a parallel shank chuck that I can then use in the mill. Or, as I said earlier, in my tailstock die holder as a sensitive drilling chuck. So we'll bring you back at the lathe just shortly when we've got this set up between centres and show you how we're how we're going to do it. Right then guys it's time to get the the Morse taper drill arbor set up in the lathe between centres. So what we've done is we've put a piece of steel stock in the chuck and we've turned a nice 30 degree point on there so we know that can be nothing other than concentric so what we're going to do now is use my previously made 
Morse Tape Tang drive dog that I've made for a very similar job when I've done this before but it was on a slightly bigger sleeve I think it was on a Morse Taper 2 I was working last time but this should be okay so we're just going to drop that on there bring the tail stock in so I'm going to use a fixed centre instead of a revolving centre for this just because my revolving centre is not accurate enough for something that requires this level of precision so we've got fixed centre in this end we've got a good dollop of thick oil in between fixed centre and the part and we're just going to bring this clock in this is in tenth of a thou graduation so between zero and ten is a thou to give you an idea so we're going to bring that on to zero very sensitive there we go and that's moving off the zero, let's just re-zero that so I've got about a tenth of a thou or slightly less at that end alright guys we're gonna we've got plenty of oil on here we're gonna need to keep replenishing that because this is hard steel on almost hard steel I've run a file on this and you know it's it's soft enough to cut but it's pretty tough and slightly hard not ideal hard on hard so I'm, I'm slowing the revs down to about 540 and I've got about 2000 rev feed rate dialed in we'll give it a go and see what happens So we're just on the final pass, I've been taking balance cuts to get me to my finished size, I'm not changing anything feed or speed wise. That should be us on our finished size. It 
it's a little bit warm so we might be slightly plus on what I'm expecting we'll give it a measure and then we'll let it cool down and then we'll give it a final measure but I'm expecting 10mm on the nose There we go. We're 10 mil on the nose. So again, balance cuts. If you've not seen that before, please go back and look at my previous tips videos for an explanation of how that works. Very useful on any turning job on a lathe. So that concludes the turning. I'm just going to deburr this corner. It's a bit sharp here. We're just going to deburr that, and then we'll take this out of the lathe and then we just need to chop off the back end which we don't need and then that's the job complete from a turning perspective. Alright guys we've got a bit of EM1A up in the chuck so what we're now going to make is the piece for my tailstock die holder so here's the one that I made to actually hold the one size of die that I've used so far in, in this since I've built it um, if you want to see that, go back to my videos way in the past, probably over a year ago, since I made this, designed this and made this. So I'm now going to make another one of these to suit the chuck. So a bit of turning to do, a drilled and ream hole up the middle, and then onto the mill for a slot to go in. And then we've also, on this one, going to have another hole, grubs for a grub screw, and a bit of... I'm not really sure how I'm going to put the get the grub screw to clamp onto the shaft. I might just use a normal grub screw and we just put we just mill a tiny flat onto the shaft of the that I've just turned of the micro chuck so that we're not marring the surface up because this is always going to be held in a collet and not in a chuck so that'll be fine. So we'll crack on with this bit so I'll bring you back when we're doing some of the turning.
Okay, we've got our part in the vise ready for putting the slot in that we need to put in. We've got a 10mm ML in the chuck. Just thought we'd show a different way of touching on. So I've got this bit of paper, it's 0.1. You can either do it statically and bring the paper up, but with a carbide end mill that's never a good idea. So we're going to do it the dynamic method with the spindle running. So we'll just show you that. Nice and easy, zero my y axis, and I know that I'm now 0.1 away off that face, so that won't have marked the part at all. Nice, easy way of touching on rather than switching out to put the edge finder in and all that good stuff, so dead simple. So I'll just get set up at our right position and I'll bring you back in when we're milling the slot. So we're all set up, we're going to try a 2mm depth of cut and see how this goes in mild steel. There we go, that's a 10mm slot, 5mm deep. Obviously the mill isn't happy, it cuts okay, but the vibrations the mill makes are pretty horrendous, and that's largely a lot of the reasons that I want to do some work with this going forward, but more than capable of cutting that in mild steel. We'll pop that out, give it a bit of a deburr, and then we've got I've got a bit of working out to do where I'm gonna put a grub screw, so we've got a hole to drill and tap in this which will which we'll do next. So I just need to put a flat on the arbor itself for the grub screw to bite in and fortunately I can dip into this recess that's already here, we just need to extend it very very slightly so that will mean there's no interference with the clamping when I put it in a collet chuck or even in a, in a chuck, you know, a, a keyless chuck but not that I'm going to be using it in that but we're just going to extend this little recess just on one side just to put a flat on there so we'll try that now we're going to go pretty steady because this is quite hard I've got a 6 mil solid carbide end mill an old beaten up one that I'm not too worried about because it's going to probably knock it to bits this so we'll give it a try
perfect. So when you're doing anything with tapers like this, it's really important that everything is absolutely spotlessly clean. No grease, no oil, no swarf, no burrs. So we're just going to use some methylated spirits and I'm just going to make sure that this taper is absolutely degreased and totally clean and there's nothing that's going to get in the way and then we're going to do the same thing in the back of the chuck with the taper so I'm just going to squash the rag in the meths on it and just give that a really good clean out inside Then we'll give it a wipe with a fresh bit of paper. We'll have a good look at that. That looks really good, can't see anything in there. So we're just going to assemble this now. Dry. And then we're going to put that in with a little bit of help. So we've got a nice clean bit of wood, we've wound the jaws right back so they're not protruding and we're just going to sit that on the wood and with the help of a little hammer we're going to use the copper face end on this, one hit is all you need and we need to make sure it's a good one and that's that taper absolutely put together and that won't come apart, that's all you need to do. So I'm just going to bring you back shortly, so that's my chuck done, so that will go into a collet chuck now in the mill and I can use that for very very small diameter drills which is really good but what I'll do is we'll just nip to the lathe and I'm going to build this up into the tailstock die holder and just show you the sensitive drilling application and I want to try it out because that tailstock die holder was my design, I'd always got this in mind so I want to see whether it actually works or not because it may not there may be too many build up of interfaces that means this doesn't work and I never really knew whether it would until we tried it so now I've got the little chuck we can give it a go so I'll bring you back in a moment when we're having a look at that so here's my tailstock die holder with its very close fitting movement on it shown in my previous videos here's my cartridge with my chuck so we're just going to drop that in now and again that should be very close fitting we're just going to tighten that up onto the flat that we've just milled So you get the idea, there's my chuck and we can now hopefully use this as a sensitive drilling device for very small holes in the lathe and it wouldn't be fair to tease you with that and not try it would it? So we'll just put a bit of old brass up or something in the chuck, we'll put a tiny centre drill in and a tiny drill because I'm desperate to see whether this works. So we put a bit of brass in the chuck, we've just faced it off, we've got a tiny centre drill in the chuck, we've put some oil on the moving part of the tailstock die holder and we'll give it a shot and see what happens. Well there's two bits of news, the good news is it's bang on centre which is fantastic, the bad news is that centre drill is absolutely knackered. We'll have another go with something else.
So a moment of truth, we've got a one mil diameter drill in there. I'm limited by spindle speed so I can only go 1200 but we'll give it a shot see what happens. Well there you go, proof conclusive, that is absolutely perfect. That's just gone a good 8mm deep with a 1mm drill in seconds, lots of feel through there. I can feel everything that's going on through the die holder that's going on at the drill end, so that is perfect. So I'll just show you this on the mill. We've dropped the chuck into an ER collet and I've got my one millimetre drill again, smallest drill I've got. We're just going to drop that into this chuck, which should be a lot easier than it used to be dropping it into the big chuck that I've got, he says. <laughs> Famous last words, eh? There we go. And I've just got a bit of paper up behind, just so that you can see the drill. So we'll just fire the spindle up and we'll see what that looks like. So there's a tiny, tiny bit of weeble wobble on that, but I think largely that's probably in the drill more than anything. But yeah, really pleased with that, that's running very true. So we'll nip to the bench now and close this episode out. Well there we go guys, that's finished that little project off. So that's got my micro chuck with a nice arbor on the back that's dual purpose for the mill which will be incredibly useful, especially now I'm getting into the model engine building. That's you know I struggled massively with the Mark engine I've just done, getting one millimetre drills to run true in my big chuck so that's going to be really useful for you know tiny drilling applications on the mill so that's that bit done and then blown away with how good that is in the tailstock die holder you know, I designed that tailstock die holder as I said with this in mind this type of thing in mind as a, as a sensitive drilling device but was never really sure whether it would do the job or not just based on all the interfaces that there are to get you, you know till you get to your drill point there's quite a lot you've got the Morse taper at the back you've got yeah there's many interfaces in there but yeah that was absolutely spot on as you've just seen that's going to be so useful for tiny hole drilling in the lathe it's just basically turned you know a decent sized lathe into a almost a tiny little micro lathe for that kind of application so yeah really good really happy with that that's a lot more capability now into the workshop and just to make life easier so I hope you've enjoyed that I hope that might have given some of you some ideas if you go back and look at my tailstock die holder videos there a long time ago I've still got the drawings that I drew up for that so if anybody wants to make one please email me and the email address is on the title screen of all my videos or on the end screen just drop me an email and I will send you the they're only pencil and paper drawings but they're good enough to, for you to be able to manufacture that tailstock die holder or even scale it up or down to suit your lathe if you've got a bigger lathe or a smaller lathe so I hope somebody might find that useful so thank you all very much for watching as I said I hope you enjoyed that thank you to the subscribers and the new subscribers that have come along and we'll catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making something else.